So welcome to another week of live from Kangaroo Island. And today we're at the Australian Sea Lion Colony down at Sewer Bay. Uh, the uh, National Parks team are with us. You can only access the colony here with a guide. And um, this is a colony of around 900 Australian sea lions. But firstly, where are we? Where's Kangaroo Island? For those who have not seen the uh, our episodes before, we are off the south coast of the Australian continent. Adelaide is our gateway city, only a 20 minute flight away. And um, we're right on the edge of the Southern Ocean. So you hear a constant uh, you know, roar of the waves out to uh, the left of us there. This uh, waves always come in. And uh, yeah, we're gonna have a bit of a look at the, the lives of uh, what is one of the rarest of all the sea lions. Australian sea lions are only found from about Perth in Western Australia around into South Australia. And Kangaroo Island has one of the largest colonies of these animals. They live here year round, so there's no sense of seasonality in terms of you know, you've got to go at a particular month because you, know, you won't find them. That's not the case, they're always here. But what they're doing will depend on where they are in their breeding cycle. Their breeding cycle is consistent, but not seasonal, which is really interesting. They have a 17 and a half month breeding period between mating and giving birth, and it's ongoing. So all the girls here will all have their pups within a matter of four to five months. So it's a classic bell curve with a few early and a few late and a big peak in the middle. And, uh, and they spend a lot of time nursing their pups. The mums do all of the care. The males just, uh, they just mate and move on. And uh, the mums do all of the care, all the training of the pups. They take them to sea, teach them how to fish. But meanwhile, they're always nursing them because they're a mammal just like us. And, uh, you know, the little guys uh, spend all their time resting, like these little fellows on the right here. Um, the others on the beach spend much of their time resting because when they go to sea, they're out at sea for days and days, like you know, four, sometimes five days, continuously feeding. They take a big breath, dive down to the bottom, and they're looking for octopus, crabs, lobster, some, perhaps some scale fish, and they eat them out at sea. One of those dives may be 12 to 15 minutes on one breath, come to the surface, and they've got a really, really rapid recovery. Their, their turnaround is only a couple of minutes, and then off they go diving again. So when they come back onto the shore, they're exhausted, so we see a lot of them here on the beach. If you're not these little fellows wrestling and annoying everybody, it's sleep time, it's the catch-up for those who have been out at sea fishing. So we're going to have a bit of a scan around here to the left. physically bigger than the females by probably a good 40% in terms of length and 60% or more in terms of weight and when the males are in their, in their prime they're even uh, you know, heavier than that. At the start of the breeding season they really come in with lots and lots of weight and they'll spend much of uh, you know, that three to four months time on the beach. I've got some, uh, some gulls just in the background there. They're, uh, Crested terns, or I think the same bird you call in the Northern Hemisphere, if you're tuning in from the Northern Hemisphere, a swift tern. There's a lot of animals that share the beach, the sea lions, wooded dofferels, ospreys going past. So it's a really nice natural history uh, experience to come down here with a guide and able to see what's going on, just interpret their behaviour. Um, and they're only a matter of, uh, you know, 30, 40 metres away, we've got a big zoom lens in, so that's bringing them closer, but uh, you're able to see them from 30, 40 metres, so that's what, you know, you're less than, uh, you know, 70, 
to 100 feet, depending on the activity. The, the management of people down here is, um, is quite dynamic. If the animals need a bit more room, if they're racing around or moving into the dunes or coming back down, we then have to get out of the way. So there's no real hard and fast, this is how close we can stand, it's, this is how close we can be now, but if the animals decide to come towards us, then we're the ones that back away. So the sea lions have the right of way here. So the one that's sitting up there right in the middle of the screen, that's one of the sub-adult males. So if that was a female of that age, she'd already be breeding. The boys would like to, they've got all the equipment already to go, but they don't have a chance against those big guys. So during the breeding season, they are very, very wary and quite respectful of the, uh, the big fellas because uh, no one wants to upset those, uh, those creatures. And in terms of the, the beach down here, we've got access to a beach of about, it's a kilometre long, so that's what three quarters, half to three quarters of a mile. But the sea lions have access to a much, much longer stretch of the coast, and they go quite a long way inland. Much to the surprise of many visitors who come down, where we often come across animals that are snoozing up in the dunes, um, often you know, hundreds and hundreds of metres from the, uh, the, the shoreline. Just going to move a little bit more. And that one there is, uh, the one that's in the middle of the screen now, you can see on the back of it, see a, the back of the head is dark and also in the middle of the back. So that little female there is undergoing molt. So that means getting a new coat. Fur is the old coat, and there's the silver grey, the darker, is the new fur coming through from, uh, from inside. This is a good example, I said before, about the mums being uh, good mums and, uh, and you're looking after the little ones. It's a fairly large pup that's nursing and uh, the mum's just quietly uh, snoozing on the beach and the little guy's quite happy to, uh, to refuel. And at that size, they're going to be getting not only the, the nutrition from the mother, but she'll be taking them out and they'll be starting to, uh, to hunt for themselves as well. There's been some really good work done with um, cameras put on the back of the sea lions and we know when they do go to sea, they're often going back to exactly the same locations. So they know the little caves where the cuttlefish and the octopus live. So they've got a very, very good hunting strategy and they keep going back to all the, all the, uh, the good spots. And there, there's a bit of action just around to the right here from, from the male coming up the beach. So that's a teenage boy who's just come up and given someone a bite on the tail. So uh, just, you know, feeling his, uh, the hormones are sort of starting to kick in and uh, just being a, a bit bolshy and annoying, which uh, we sometimes see in other species. He's coming up to the other little guys. That's probably a female that's ignored him. And then the, uh, there's a male that's coming up. You know from the behavior more so than the appearance, because as young ones, they're the same color as the females. And uh, they're just a bit wary of the bigger guy, but uh, moving on up the beach out of their way. The adults are really careful with their, their energy, they're very uh, efficient, whereas the little ones, I don't care if they run out of, run out of energy, because I just go and find mum and, and refuel. A lot of this, the play that you see here, when the, the males are big, you know, in you know, 10, 12 years' time, these little guys will be doing exactly the same sort of manoeuvres, but they're going to be carrying a lot more weight, and uh, there'll be a, a fairly serious fight because the winners of the fights gets, uh, gets the girls.
here comes that, uh, that same troublemaker teenager coming in from the, uh, the back there to ignore them. Scan around here on the, the ones coming up the beach. So a little female there in the midst of them, next to the uh, that suburb male that's sitting up. So very social animals. They come up and they'll they'll sniff first, nose to nose, and uh, work out who's who in the. Uh, the pecky order who their mates are. It's a nice bit of sunshine just on the one on the left here, there on the water's edge, just zoom in on that. So the one's coming up the beach and then as soon as they hit some uh, drier sand, often they'll have a bit of a break and and towel off, dry off in the uh, in the sand, so they don't get too cold. Because often this time of year, the water temperature is uh, a bit warmer than the uh, the air temperature. So you get the uh, the wind when they're wet, they get the wind chill. So they often uh, roll in the sand and dry off relatively soon after getting out of the water. coming up to sniff like the other one did just to uh, see who's who. Wake up that one that's molting, big yawn, so still pretty tired after a, a swim. That little one's looking at us, so they're obviously aware of us, but they've developed over a very, very long period of time down here, developed quite a, uh, a tolerance of people sharing their beach as long as we do the, the right thing, keep the distance, give them the space. They, uh, they are very, very tolerant of us sharing their beach. It's another little one coming up the out of the water. So constantly, day and night, they're just chewing and throwing. They, they don't uh, fish cooperatively, they go out on their own. So this little one's coming up in amongst the, uh, the other sea lions. Skirting around the big boy, giving him a, yep, <laughs> giving him a bit of uh, distance. before they're very very sociable so these two little ones here just uh, snuggling up throw a flipper over the other one that's a little pup that's uh, that's not so little it's still nursing from its mum we saw that one nursing just a moment ago The, uh, the sea lions are back here on the beach. They're pretty, pretty safe, uh, given that uh, you know, they're in a protected area, and we you know, make sure that uh, they're not disturbed by people coming down here. When they're out to sea, their biggest threat are the uh, the great whites, the uh, which are quite uh, 
wouldn't say common, but they're, they're not an unusual encounter of the, uh, the Southern Ocean here. And the other um, predator, which is not so common, but uh, we're getting increasing numbers or increasing sightings, are the orcas. They also, also hunt the, uh, the sea lions, but uh, that's not as, as frequent a uh, encounter as the, the great whites. We've got a little one over behind. Uh, looks like that one may be time to go fishing. So we're just slowly, slowly heading out. They'll often move a little bit and then they'll rest and then off they go again. And let's see if it's uh, as soon as that water hits it. coming in, it's going to pick him up and off he'll go. Must be a strange feeling going from being fairly awkward on, uh, on four flippers on land to uh, suddenly being weightless and just so fast and sleek and manoeuvrable when you're in the ocean. sitting up now and grooming that's one of the females that we saw come out of the water earlier so uh, they do spend a lot of time grooming a bit of a scratch very very flexible and uh, there's a, a very common pose often people say what are they doing with their nose in the air that uh, that seal yoga pose with the uh, you know, putting their chest in the sun be hard until you can learn to speak sea lions and know exactly what that benefit is from uh, from that that posture. It's certainly one that's very very po very uh, common though. Um, so it might just be a, a good stretch. Might be warming their chests. Could be draining their sinuses after being out in the water. Don't know, but uh, certainly a very very uh, uh, common position for them to rest in. leave it at, uh, at this uh, point we'll sign off leave the sea lions to doing what they do best snoozing in the sun thanks very much for tuning in and uh, look forward to seeing you next time when we're live from kangaroo island